A lot of Docker speed is achieved by keeping images small. Docker Engine does its bit by sharing locally stored layers between images wherever possible and through some really smart caching. But no one's exempt from doing their part in the Battle of the Bulge. I'm going to demonstrate something that I first saw a long time ago in the Red Hat Developers blog. It gets to the core of how Docker images are built. Each new run command in a Docker file will generate a new layer in the resulting image. And each new layer takes up extra space. Therefore, squeezing multiple commands into a single run line by using two AND characters will actually make a big difference. Well, I'm not sure that's always true. I ran a few of my own experiments, and there were cases where the differences were negligible. But here's one where there's no doubting the results. I'm going to create two versions of the Docker file, build images from both, and then compare their sizes. First, I'll create a new directory, which allows me to use a new Docker file without messing with any others I might have already created. Now I'll paste the multiple line version. We'll start with Ubuntu 16.04 as our base. Yeah, I know. Ubuntu 16.04 is prehistoric. Even though this particular example is really old, the lesson it teaches is still absolutely relevant. In any case, I'll then use apt-get to update the repository index and then install curl, which we'll need for the next step. The make directory command is to prepare a home for the contents of JBoss's Wildfly archive we'll later download. As it happens, I doubt anything would actually work if we tried to run this as a standalone container but it will illustrate my point. Next, I'll change directory to temp and, using curl, download the latest version of Wildfly. Then I'll use tar to extract the archive, move it to its target location in the opt slash jboss slash wildfly directory, and finally remove the original archive. I'll save the Docker file and run docker build, tagging the image many lines. The dot at the end, by the way, tells Docker to look for a Dockerfile script in the current directory. I'll pause the video while Docker goes about its business. I will note that Docker's use of existing layers and cache means that nothing will be downloaded unless it's absolutely necessary. Now, I'll edit the Docker file, and by adding AND characters, combine many of the commands into a single run line. If I mess something up and corrupted a command, it would exit with a code other than zero, and the docker build operation would fail, reporting an error as part of the command output. I'll save the file and run docker build again, this time tagging the image as one line. With that done, I'll run docker images to compare the image sizes. And the difference is amazing. Just by including all the commands in a single run line, cut the file size nearly in half. So the way we write our Docker files can have a huge impact on size and performance. Before we go on, I'll just delete the two images we created using RMI. As that blog post pointed out, this principle can apply to other cases. For instance, if you had the choice of basing an image on either the latest version of a distribution like Debian or an earlier version, but then updating within your Docker file, you really want to go with the latest release. That's because invoking apt-get update will add a significant size overhead to your image. Find this useful? Why not follow the link in the description and head over to view the complete course on Pluralsight. And of course, for even more technology goodness, don't forget to subscribe to this channel.